Good morning, you guys. Today is Tuesday, April 28th, and I'm going to continue our Harry Potter read aloud. And when we quit reading yesterday, Harry Potter was going to Diagon Alley with Hagrid where he needed to get school supplies to go to Hogwarts, which is the wizarding school. Okay? Passerby stared a lot at Hagrid as they walked through the little town to the station. Harry couldn't blame them. Not only was Hagrid twice as tall as everybody else, he kept pointing at perfectly ordinary things like parking meters and saying, See that, Harry? Things these muggles dream up. Hagrid, said Harry, panting a bit as he ran to keep up. Did you say there are dragons at Gringotts? Well, so they say, said Hagrid. Crikey, I'd like a dragon. You'd like one? Wanted one ever since I was a kid. Here we go. They had reached the station. There was a train to London in five minutes' time. Hagrid, who didn't understand muggle money, as he called it, gave the bills to Harry so they could buy their tickets. People stared more than ever on the train. Hagrid took up two seats and sat knitting what looked like a canary yellow circus tent. Still got your letter, Harry? he asked as he counted stitches. Harry took the parchment envelope out of his pocket. Good, said Hagrid. There's a list of things there that you will need. Harry unfolded a second piece of paper he hadn't noticed the night before, and he read, Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Uniform. First-year students will require three sets of plain work robes. Black. One plain pointed hat. Black for day wear. One pair of protective gloves. Dragon hide or similar. One winter cloak. Black silver fastenings. Please note that all pupils' clothes should carry name tags. Course books. All students should have a copy of each of the following. The Standard Book of Spells, Grade 1 by Miranda Goshock. A History of Magic by Bethilda Bagshot. Magic Theory by Adelbert Waffling. A Beginner's Guide to Transfer Figuration by Emmerich Switch. 1,000 Magical Herbs and Fungi by Felita Spore. Magical Droughts and Potions by Arsenius Jigger. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander. The Dark Forces, a guide to self-protection by Quentin Trimble. Other equipment. One wand, one cauldron, pewter, standard size 2. One set of glass or crystal files. Uh, one telescope, one, brass, one set of brass scales. Students may also bring an owl or a cat or a toad. Parents are reminded that first years are not allowed their own broomsticks. Can we buy all this in London? Harry wondered aloud. If you know where to go, said Hagrid. Harry had never been to London before. Although Hagrid seemed to know where he was going, he was obviously not used to getting there in an ordinary way. He got stuck in the ticket barrier on the underground and complained loudly that the seats were too small and the trains were too small, slow. I don't know how muggles manage without magic, he said as they climbed a broken down escalator that led up to a, bus a bustling road lined with shops. Hagrid was so huge that he parted the crowd easily. All Harry had to do was keep close behind him. They passed bookshops and music stores, hamburger restaurants and cinemas, but nowhere that looked as if it could sell you a magic wand. Kylo, do you want to say hi? Mr. Cheeto Mouth, say hi. Where are you? Now go on, go play. Who Were there really that? shops that sold spell books Who and broomsticks? Who is that, Mama? This, these are, this is for my kids. I'm reading a book for my kids, okay? You go play until I get done. No, okay. Might this not be some huge joke that the Dursleys had cooked up? If Harry had known, hadn't known that the Dursleys had no sense of humor, he might have thought so. Yet somehow, even though everything Hagrid had told him so far was unbelievable, he, uh, Harry couldn't have helped but trust him. This is it, said Hagrid, coming to a halt, the Leaky Cauldron. It's a famous place. It was a tiny, grubby-looking pub. If Hagrid hadn't pointed it out, Harry wouldn't have noticed it was there. The people hurrying by didn't glance at it. Their eyes slid from the big shop on one side to the record shop on the other as if they couldn't see the leaky cauldron at all. In fact, Harry had the most peculiar feeling that only he and Hagrid could see it. Before he mentioned this, Hagrid had steered him inside. Kylo, I'll be right back, you guys, okay? I'm going to take Kylo out of here so that he doesn't get into Miss Alt stuff while we're working. No. Okay. 
for a famous place, it was very dark and shabby. A few old women were sitting in the corner drinking tiny glasses out of tiny glasses. One of them was smoking a long pipe. A little man in a top hat was talking to the old bartender who was quite bald and looked like a toothless walnut. The low buzz of chatter stopped when they walked in. Everyone seemed to know Hagrid. They waved and smiled at him and the bartender reached for a glass saying, the usual Hagrid can't top Tom. I'm on Hogwarts business, he said, clapping his great hand on Harry's shoulder and making Harry's knees buckle. Goodness, said the bartender, looking at Harry. Is this... Can this be? The leaky cauldron had suddenly gone completely still and silent. Bless my soul, he whispered. Harry Potter, what an honor. He hurried out from behind, rushed toward Harry, and seized his hand with tears in his eyes. Welcome back, Mr. Potter. Welcome back. Harry didn't know what to say. Everyone was looking at him. Oddly, the woman with the pipe was puffing on it without realizing it had gone out. Hagrid was beaming. Remember, beaming means that giant smile. Then there was a great scraping of chairs, and Harry found himself shaking hands with everyone in the leaky cauldron. Doris Crockford, Mr. Potter, can't believe I'm meeting you. So proud, Mr. Potter. I'm just so proud. Always wanted to shake your hand. I'm all a flutter. Delighted, Mr. Potter. Just can't you tell Diggle's the name, Daedalus Diggle. I've seen you before, said Harry, as De Daedalus Diggle's top hat fell off in his excitement. You bowed to me once in a shop. shop. He remembers, cried Diggle, Daedalus Diggle, looking around at everyone. Did you remember that? Did you see that? He remembers me. Harry shook hands again and again. Doris Crockford kept coming back for more. A pale young man made his way forward very nervous, nervously. One of his eyes was twitching. Professor Quirrell, said Hagrid. Harry, Professor Quirrell will be one of your teachers at Hogwarts. P -p -p Potter, stammered Professor Quirrell, grasping Harry's hand. C -c Can't tell you how p -p -p pleased I am to meet you. What sort of magic do you teach, Professor Quirrell? D -d Defense against the d -d dark arts, muttered Professor Quirrell, as though he'd not rather not think about it. Not that you n n need it, eh, p -p Potter? He laughed nervously. You be g -g getting all your equipment, I suppose? I've g got to p -p pick up a new book on vampires myself. He looked terrified at the very thought. But the others wouldn't let Plefess Professor Quirrell keep Harry to himself. It took almost ten minutes to get away from them all. At last, Hagrid managed to make himself heard of the, over the babble. Must get on. Lots to buy. Come on, Harry. Doris Crockford shook Harry's hand one last time, and Hagrid led them through the bar and out into a small walled courtyard where there was nothing but a trash can and a few weeds. Hagrid grinned at Harry. Told you, didn't I? I told you you were famous. Even Professor Quirrell was trembling to meet you. Mind you, he's usually trembling. Is he always like that? Oh, yeah. Poor bloke. Brilliant mind. He was fine until, well, he was studying books, but then he took a year off to get some first-hand experience. They say he met vampires in the Black Forest, and there was a nasty bit of trouble with a witch. Never been the same. Sacred, scared of the students, scared of his own subjects. Now where's me umbrella? Vampires? Witches? Harry's head was swimming. Hagrid, meanwhile, was counting bricks in the wall above the trash can. Three up, two across, he muttered, right, stand back, Harry. He tapped the wall three times with the point of his umbrella. The brick he touched quivered, it wiggled, and in the small in the middle a small hole appeared. It grew wider and wider. A second later they were facing an archway large enough even for Hagrid, an archway into a cobbled street that twisted and turned out of sight. Welcome, said Hagrid, to Diagon Alley. He gr grinned at Harry's amazement. They stepped through the archway. Harry looked quickly over his shoulder and saw the archway shrink instantly back into the solid wall. The sun shone brightly on a stack of cauldrons outside the nearest shop. Cauldrons, all sizes, copper, brass, pewter, silver, self-stirring, collapsible, said a sign hanging over them. Yeah, you'll be needing one, said Hagrid, but we gotta get your money first. Harry wished he had about eight more eyes. He turned his head in every direction as they walked up the street, trying to look at everything at once. Here, um, a plump woman outside of an apothecary, apothecary is kind of like a, um, a pharmacy where you go get medicines at, was shaking her head as they passed, saying, Dragon liver, 16 sickles an ounce. They're mad. A low, soft hooting came from dark, from dark shop with a sign saying, Ilops Al Emporium, Tawny Screech, Barn Brown, and Snowy. Several boys of Harry's age had their noses pressed against a window with broomsticks in it. 
Look, Harry heard one of them say, the new Nimbus 2000, fastest ever. There were shops selling robes, shops selling telescopes, and strange silver instruments Harry had never seen before. Windows stacked with barrels of bat spleen and eel troll eyes and tottering spells of tottering piles of spell books, quills, rolls of parchment, potion, bo po potion bottles, and globes of the moon. Gringotts, said Hagrid. They had reached a snowy white building that tottered that towered on the other so shops. Standing beside it, its bronze doors wearing uniform was Yeah, that's a goblin, said Hagrid, quietly as they walked up the stone steps toward toward him. The goblin was about a head shorter than Harry. He had a swarthy, clever face, a pointed beard, and Harry noticed very long fingers and feet. He bowed as they walked inside. Now they were facing a pair of doors, silver this time, with words engraved upon them. Enter, stranger, but take heed of what awaits the sin of greed. For those who take but do not earn must pay most dearly in their turn. So if you seek beneath our floors a treasure that was never yours, thief, you have been warned no, beware no, no, of no, finding no, no, no. more than treasure here. So that's where we're going to stop for today. Um, we get to see what they find in Gringotts in the bank when we get back. See you guys tomorrow.